All right, this is part two of lab two. So earlier in part one, what you should have done is you made these LEDs and you powered them um, through different pins of the Arduino. So what we're going to do in this lab is we are going to use voice recognition to turn on the different LEDs, kind of simulate like a smart home kind of deal. We will then add, add one more component um, as well. So this is already, uh, programmed for us. So uh, the first thing you would have to do is, is you plug this in and you connect this wire to ground. The next one you want to connect to the V in, which is all the way over here. The next one will go to pins two and three. Uh, in theory, uh, we could have coded it to be any of them, but we coded the, the, the transmit and receive to be um, hooked up to those ones. That's, that's just a, a function of the code. Could be any pins. But, but we have them set up for that this way. So once we have it set up with it like this, uh, what we can do is we can actually take a look at the code. So in order to take a look at the code, I'm gonna share my screen. So looking at this code that uh, we loaded, um, we're just gonna go through a brief, brief explanation of what's going on here. And obviously we'll mention some things that, that you might have to change if you were gonna add more of them. So to start, uh, just uh, some commenting, it's telling you what the transmit and receive ports are. I told you before those are coded. Um, actually, they're coded in right here. So uh, if, we, if you wanted to use different Arduino ports uh, for some reason to transmit and receive from your voice recognition module, you could do that. We're also including some libraries. So there's a, the voice recognition library uh, that was pre-downloaded obviously for, for this demonstration. You would have to extract that to your library uh, if you didn't have it set up, but it, it, it'll already be set up for you, obviously, in this in this course. Uh, and if not, again, just extract it to your libraries. So the, including your libraries, and then at the beginning here, uh, it is, you're, you're defining a bunch of global variables. So, you know, we have a variable for the kitchen pin, the living room pin, and the oven pin. So again, we had this looked at the 6, 8, and 12. Uh, if we wanted to add more of those or change those around, that, that's where we would do that. Uh, we're also defining the pin state. So basically, if the state, if the pin is on or off, right? So it needs to know whether it's on or off, because when it hears the word, if it's on, it'll turn it off. And if it's off, it'll turn it on. In order to do that, it has to know what its current state is. So we're just uh, initializing those, those variables as an off. Um, it, it'll, it'll change uh, in the code itself. And since these are changing, uh, uh, is, is, this is why uh, you were actually defining them as integers. Here's, here's a different way to do it. Um, in theory, you could have defined this as int kitchen switch zero uh, equals zero, int kitchen living room switch equals one and so on. But uh, uh, it's just uh, some, sometimes programming, it's actually a little bit easier. Basically this defining is basically saying that every time the code slash compiler sees the word kitchen switch, it just reads it as zero, uh, as opposed to actually subbing in the variable, it actually just automatically reads it as zero, one or two. So uh, these, these are corresponding to where the word is saved in your voice recognition module though. Uh, we'll, get to, we'll get to that later on. But uh, basically the kitchen switch, the kitchen word is saved in slot one, I mean zero. Um, the living room switch is saved in slot one. And, and the oven is word is 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 slay, saved in slot two. Um, so obviously, if you wanted to add more, like a fan, or another word, like a laundry room or something like that, um, you, wherever that word was saved is what you would want this number to correspond to. Um, and then, of course, you would have to add um, the states and also the 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 pin and wherever you have it actually hooked up to the pin. So in the setup function, uh, we're just setting, setting some baud rates to start, um, the serial um, versus everything else. Uh, and then for the records, basically it's, it's reading in, this is reading in the records. So it's actually reading in, if you look here, seven words. So it's actually, you know, slots, uh, basically uh, three, four, five, uh, well, zero, one, two, and then it's also reading in three, four, five, six, which we don't really need. Um, you, you will need obviously three eventually, um, but you won't have to ever edit this because it's actually rating in all seven voice commands that can read. 
uh, the voice command module that we have kind of groups them in, into groups of seven. So it's just it's just reading one of those four groups. Um, and then above it, actually, what we're doing is 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 we're reading what each one uh, is. So so we're getting a bunch of uh, basically we're we're reading in the record for what, what so it can recognize what the word oven is, what the word living room is, and what the word kitchen is. We're also setting up in the setup function which ones uh, are what type the pin modes. Uh, this is pretty standard. You, you had to do this for the first uh, part one as well. So. The kitchen pin, the living room pin, oven pin, and fan pin, laundry room pin, whatever you add, they're all outputs because you're you're outputting the 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 reading to an LED. Um, so inside the the loop function, so inside the loop function, basically it it needs to know the first thing it's going to try and do when it runs through one loop is is the led on or off it needs to know that like so is the led that corresponds to the kitchen on or off is the living room uh led on or off or is the oven led on or off because if it's not um if it's not on it needs it knows it needs to turn it on if it hears the word and if it is on it knows that it, it, it needs it needs to know that so it can turn it off so um, and that's actually what this the switch case function is doing down here. So the switch case function down here is uh, basically cycling through. So if it hears this word, so it's, uh, the switch of the of the of the buffer, which is basically what it's hearing. So if it hears um, kitchen switch, uh, which is basically the word kitchen, uh, which we defined way earlier um, in the code. So, uh, um, but anyway, so if we if we uh, if we define if it hears the word kitchen and the kitchen is low uh aka if the kitchen light is off it turns it on it also will print the that it is on and then it will also uh turn it off if the kitchen light is currently on so it goes through and it does that for the the, the living room as well so if, if this word is heard um basically then it turns the led on or off so it's on if it was off yeah you get the picture it does the same exact thing for the oven so um, after making sure it's plugged in um, again if whenever you're doing breadboarding on the Arduino you want to make sure it's not um, but you ours is ours is plugged in uh, plate because it was already uh, whenever you're doing breadboarding you want to make sure that it is um, not plugged into power um, but since I already did this breadboarding for you, it is plugged in already because we already completed all the breadboarding. So we can upload the sketch to the Arduino. It's gonna wait for it to compile. And so we can, we can kind of test it out um, and say the word like oven, oven. All right, so that works. So let's take a closer look at that. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can kind of see that. So as I say, oven turns on, I say oven, a little again a little <laughs> tricky and say oven oven and it turns off so this isn't really programmed well because if, if i say the word kitchen for instance uh it's supposed to turn on a word kitchen kitchen and you saw me struggling with the word oven so basically however this was programmed to recognize the words is not recognizing the words well enough so we're gonna have to actually go in and reprogram those words so that i can say the words as i as i pronounce them more clearly so uh, let's let's first let's see what is actually going on in the serial monitor. So you know, as as we're sharing the serial monitor, um, so let, let me show, show this. We do want to change this to um, a really really high baud. This is actually what it's supposed to be. Uh, but typically for the other labs, you kind of had it, I think 9,600. So you want to make sure this is 1,500, 200. If it is 9,600, let me actually show you what's going. So if I say oven and it turns on, it just, it's, it's giving, it's outputting nonsense, right? It doesn't know exactly what's going on. So if I say oven again, yeah, it just doesn't know what's going on. But if I actually change this to, to a, a much faster mod, which is uh, 115,200, and I say oven, oven, it actually gives me the oven on. And then if I say oven again, oven, oven, 
it, it'll give me oven off. So it, again, it says oven on. So I go oven, oven, turns on. And, and, and so on. So again, these aren't really showing the right word, uh, recognizing my words very well. So we're gonna have to actually go through and train them. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can exit out of the serial monitor and open up the serial train, uh, the, the sample train module. So you don't really need to understand what's going on in this code, um, but you can just upload it to the Arduino. And once it's finished uploading, we can reopen the serial monitor. This is another case where you wanna make sure that it is this or else you, all of these words are just gonna be a bunch of nonsense. So just make sure, sure you use that. So let's retrain the word for position one. So we can uh, actually in position zero, so we can train zero. Uh, it's gonna give me a prompt to speak now. I'm not gonna say it correctly. Um, and then I'll say speak again and it can't match. So then it's gonna keep cycling through this until it actually can match the words. Um, also, if you take a look at it here, whenever it starts turning solid red, that's when you can actually start measuring the words. So it's kind of easier for you to say it that way. So now when it actually, next cycle round, I'm actually gonna try and train the word. So can't be matched, so let's try it. Kitchen, kitchen. Didn't make it. Kitchen. Kitchen. All right, so when it's actually successful, you can see right here, it says record zero, train successfully. So let's train the other ones. So tr living room is supposed to be in position one. So let's train that. Living room. Living room. And that was much easier trained. Um, Let's train, we're gonna retrain oven because it was a little tricky and we're also gonna train fan. So you actually can type in, if you wanna train more than one, it'll go in the order that you type these in. So we're gonna train two and three in succession. So let's go here. Oven. Oven. Fan. Fan. Didn't work, so I'll try it again, fan. Fan, fan, fan. There, now it worked. So to check and make sure that these were these run correctly, what we can actually do is we can load them. So we can load zero, one, two, and three, and it'll actually show up if we can, if it actually recognizes the word and how easily it, it recognizes it. So if I say kitchen, kitchen, living room, living room. So living room doesn't really register it well. Let me try it again. Living room. Okay, I apparently have been enunciating it a little too hard. So if I just say living room, living room. All right, I'm gonna have to train re retrain living room. So if I say oven, 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 fan, fan. So it's actually popping up the VR index, the record number and uh, we don't really have it any signature. So that is retrain living room. So that was in position one. Living room. Living room. All right, so let's see if that actually works better. So let's load them all again. So let's try living room. Much better. Um, oven, oven. Oven's a little still tricky, but we'll, we'll, we'll we will, we'll, we'll let it go right now. Uh, fan, fan, and we will change, also what was the first one? Kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. All right, so I am having to repeat myself a little bit. I'm apparently not great at repeating my words, uh, but it is at least recognizing them. So we will, um, obviously you could train these to make them even better and better but we, we won't do that right now. All right, so now that we have it ready to go, let's, let's try uploading it. So we can upload the sketch. And let's, let's see if it works any better this time. So if I say kitchen, uh, you can see it, it turns on better. Let me stop sharing to kind of uh, show you what's going on here. Okay, oven, oven, kitchen, living room, 
oven, kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. So as you can see, as I say the words, they're all turning on and off. So let's just make sure it's plotting correctly to the serial monitor. So in order to do that, let's go back and take a look at the serial monitor. So we say kitchen, oven, kitchen, uh, living room, living room, oven. All right, so as you can see, as I said the word, it turned it on and off respectively. You can turn any combination on at any time. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add something for fan. So uh, let's go back and look at the circuit. So we have all these in a row. So we're, we're gonna add, add a, a, an LED for fans. All right, so before we do anything here, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we do not have power going to this. So as you can see, as I was talking, it, it kind of registered a word, um, but and it's still blinking. So we wanna make sure that this, this is not powered whenever you're using the breadboard. So we can unplug it from the computer and then add another LED. Um, so we're going to add uh, uh, an LED representing a fan. So it's gonna be just exactly the same as the other ones. You always wanna make sure when you're adding LEDs that you're adding some sort of ballast resistor to make sure the current going through it isn't too high. Um, so then you want the one end of the LED to go to ground. Just kind of twist that around and, and make it go to ground. Right, so, so we can't really see here, but this we have connected to a ground. Um, other end, we're gonna use pin 13. So if I plug this in up here to 13, kind of twist it around and plug it into to the 13th position. You can't really see what's going on there too much, but it's going from here to the resistor and it's going down to uh, the, the one end of the, the LED and the ground. So it should be noted as well uh, that this is, these are in the same row, um, this resistor, but they're across that gap, so they're not actually connected. So now we're gonna have to edit the code. So obviously let's take a look at what needs to be edited. I've already done it um, for you um, in, in a different folder, I mean a different file, but um, let's take a look at what we're actually gonna have to edit. So looking at uh, what we have provided, we have three variables that you, you'd have to use. So instead we have to uh, define an integer for the fan pin, again, we plugged that into position 13. Um, you need a fan pin state, and you also need to define the, the fan switch, which again is in position three, so um, on the voice recognition module. So, so that, that would be three over there. So we also need to load in all the records based on, based on their position. Uh, this line won't really have to change because it's already loading in seven records, and this is only gonna be the, the fourth one. Um, we're going to need to change the mode of the of the fan pin to an output. You would need to uh, change, uh, read in the fan position each time. And we also need to change the, the, the this, this switch to add another case for the fan, the fan room switch. So whenever you see fan, it, it prints it in and out um, and, and do that. So again, I've already done that. So let me stop sharing and actually show you that it works after I, so you're gonna wanna upload after you make those changes, uh, upload that sketch to the Arduino board. Um, but before you do so, obviously we unplugged it to do the, the editing. So we're gonna have to plug it back in. All right, after we, we load and initialize and update it. Okay, so apparently picked up a word. So let me let me try and, and, and turn some words on and off. So we have, uh, again, we have kitchen, fan, fan. So the, the, what, we, what we changed actually worked. So, so the fan is turning on and off. It's picking up fan. Um, so we also, again, it works in conjunction with living room, living room, uh, kitchen, oven, fan, fan. So 
let's take a look at the uh, serial monitor just to make sure that that is showing up correctly. So let me let me switch over to that. All right, so this is the serial monitor. We will want to, uh, again, make sure this is the correct VOD. If not, you can't read it. This always has, uh, this has a bunch of stuff that kind of saved. So let's get rid of it and got put and actually hear it again. So we say living room, living room, living room, fan, 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 oven, kitchen, kitchen, oven, fan, oven, living room. All right. So that's voice recognition. So we've now essentially loaded it, let, uh, loaded in the different words and set a certain output to on and off, whether or not it works or not. So that's it for part two. All right, that was the voice recognition module um, being used to power a bunch of LEDs based on the words that you said. So for this portion of the lab, for all of you guys who are doing it online, it does say to show your TA uh, in the instructions. Obviously you can't do that. So your deliverables to attach at the end or include would be the changes to the code to enable the fan to be used. So I went over in the, in the discussion uh, which uh, lines you would have to change, um, you need to actually physically code it. So obviously you can't test it out if it, if it actually works, um, but I did go through line by line what actually worked. And hopefully um, if, if any of you uh, had teammates that were able to get in, they should have definitely been able to test it out. But anyways, so you can't, don't include like a video of, of it actually working uh, because you can't uh, because the voice recognition module you don't have. So just uh, have a deliverable, of the code of what it would be if you were going to run it in lab. Um, so in in the part two to, uh, procedure, it does actually give you a breakdown of, of where you should be changing. Like it says, three lines of code have to be added into the global variables, um, stuff like that. So if you get confused, you can read through that procedure. At the very end, that's where it kind of just says what you have to do. Um, so just, again, the code is what we need. Don't give anything else or not that you can actually give us anything else.